I'm surrounded by a sea of gravel. When we arrived here, this was a big concrete yard with old sheds and telegraph poles, and I ripped it all up and replaced it with gravel, and I didn't consider another option. I love gravel. I think it looks fabulous with a cottage or a castle. You might want to have plants just naturally self-seeding into the gravel. Plants that you like, not weeds, things like verbascum, alcamilla, ferns in places. Uh, and I love the informality of it. So you can make it look really formal and smart. You can grade it out to being looking much more informal or you can be fairly rustic. It's the most versatile surface on earth but I appreciate that many people don't like it. And I think a lot of that is to do is because it's such a variable material. You have to specify the shape of the particles, the size of the particles, the way it's laid, the color and the falls. And if you get any of that wrong, you can up, end up wading in thick, heavy gravel. You can end up with gravel migrating onto shiny new floors. You can end up with it puddling, all sorts of problems. But I'm going to talk about the benefits and how you specify it to get it right. Now gravel comes from all different quarries all over the country so you get all different colours and I think when you're, you're moving into an area and you're choosing a gravel you want to choose your local gravel because it fits with the stone of the house or the materials and it all works well together. It's a natural resource from the area. So for us it's a natural buffy colour gravel um, that we go with because that's what everybody has around here and it works visually. And then you go into the size of the particles. If you go to all different quarters, they'll give you different bands of sizes, but these are fairly common ones. Now, I've got lots of samples in front of me, and the first one I've got is a two to six millimeter gravel. Now, when you're talking about a loose gravel for a driveway or a pathway, and you mention two to six millimeters, many people say, oh, much too small. It gets caught in the treads of the tires. It gets caught in the treads of your shoes, and it's a disaster. But the reason I've included it, because one garden we did, that's what they used. And we call it gentleman's gravel here because it's got a, such a fine particle. And it's brilliant. It works perfectly. It's just laid about um, 18 mil thick maximum and it looks a dream. And so that's why I've included it. And I often think it's a nice gravel also if you're dressing up plants or something like that, if you're not actually going to walk on it a lot. So I would not exclude two to six millimeter. The next one is a four to 10 millimeter gravel. And when I say four to 10, that means the particle size is between four millimeters and 10 millimeters. And what they do is they set sieves and meshes in the quarry and it sieves through those to get the exact size of particle they want. So that's a four to 10. And many people would say this is the most popular, this is the best one for, for drives and pathways. Michael Heap, who owns CED, which is a stone and gravel company that supplies all over the country, he goes narrow, he goes 10 to 14 is his favorite. And then the final one is pretty much the one I've got here. Now bear in mind that these gravels are wet. They're wet because they've been in the bag and they've got moisture in them. And when they dry, they're much more the color that's, uh, that's laid out around me. So they go a much lighter color. And when you get a sample, I think it's actually worth washing it because you get lots of stuff on the samples here and then letting it dry and seeing it. So you can see what it looks like in the wet and what it looks like in the dry. So this is, this is the, the 10 um, to 20, which is what we have here. I love it, we've always had it, but some people told me they think it's too big. It's more difficult to walk on, perhaps if it's bigger. So um, maybe I should try a smaller size and see if I prefer it. I think it looks more gentlemanly if it's slightly smaller. It looks more rustic if it's bigger. And this is a pretty rustic place, I would say. So maybe that's why I like it. But when I pop next door to the farmyard and talk to David, he actually always specifies for the farmyard, which is where he's got big, heavy machines coming in out every day. 
he likes a 25 mil clean and that means it's one size it's just 25 and the reason he says that the clean one size works for him is when the tractors come in with mud on their tires actually it washes through better if you haven't got the little particle size integrating with the bigger ones which acts as a sort of trap but I think if you were to walk over a 25 millimeter clean with high heels on or any sort of heels, I think you would be struggling big time. And that's one thing that you want to bear in mind. Now, Michael Heap also pointed out that he nearly always recommends to use loose gravel in those hexagon grids. Now then I wouldn't call it loose gravel, I would actually call it brown gravel because when you lay it within the grid it really does not move and he likes to always lay it like that so it always looks, he thinks, perfect. You do need to brush it over every so often to keep the gravel up to the top of the grids otherwise you will see the grids and I actually often specify it loose i like loose and i don't think it's a big problem so then we go on to the particle shape and you really always want to specify angular and you can see from these these are angular particles and so when you've got angular particles and you lightly roll or you drive over them they compact much better they knit together better than one that's rounded so i wouldn't ever use a rounded gravel for a hard working surface like a drive or a pathway i would always use an angular one. And then you need to talk about actually how you lay it. So first of all, if, you, if this was just soil underneath, they would strip off the topsoil, they would put down a sub base if there was going to be heavy vehicles on it, um, which would be something like a, a hardcore or something like that, which they'd blind. And then they'd put the base, which would probably be something like an MOT type one. And for this sort of area, I'd probably have a hundred millimeter thick of it. If I was on a much weaker soil, then I might put 200 millimeter depth if I had heavier lorries and things coming in a lot. Many people would put on top of the soil before they put on the sub base or the base, they would put on terrain. And that is a fabric material which actually stops the stones going through into the soil or the subsoil below. And so it keeps the two layers um, separate. And if you've got a very clay soil, you get the clay fines which tend to migrate up a bit and the particles migrating down. And so you mix the two and the earthworms will help you do that as well. And so you don't get such, such defined layers. I didn't bother to put down the terram here. This went down probably what, would have been 35, 40 years ago and we didn't and we haven't had much problem migrating but then I haven't dug down to check in all fairness. So you lay it and then you put on the dressing layer. So you'll put on about two and a half time the largest called particle side. So if we're saying it's a 20 mil, you'll probably put 50 mil depth of this on the top. And if you were putting down this smaller one, which we said was two to six, then you'll probably put 18 mil. Now, some people say, well, we always just whack on 50 mil, but I'm being picky. I wouldn't, because I think if you put 50 mil of that down, I think you would be wading through it. And you know that awful feeling when you're wading through deep bits of gravel. So make sure you put down the depth that you want and you want to roll it. Just lightly roll it. You don't want to use the whacker plate because it, it's actually too abrasive. It will actually start to break up the gravel and, and make it disintegrate slightly. So you use a, a sort of fairly medium type roller, nothing too heavy. When you lay gravel, you should also lay it to an edge, ideally. So here we've got the gravel sets edging it. Sometimes people use wood, metal edge is brilliant paving slab, it needs a defined edge really, so that just helps contain it. Then you need to think about the gradients. The maximum slope generally you can get away with, with loose gravel, is something like 1 in 15 fall. Um, and I used to be told, when we, when we start, when I started off, um, we had lectures on construction, we used to be told that gravel used to be a non-draining surface, so you should always lay it to a fall of 1 in 30 minimum, because it's uppity-buppity, and so you, if you've got paving, it can be a much smoother, less deep fall, because water will drain off it easily, but because you've got so much resistance with the gravel surface, it needs something quite high, like a 1 in 30 fall. But now everything's changed. We want things to drain through, we don't want flash flooding, and so now we reckon you lay it as a surface that actually the water will percolate through. 
So you could lay it almost flat really, but you wouldn't want to go more than a one in 15 fall. Now, if you're going steeper, then obviously the answer is to use the hexagon slabs. And for that, I've known it go up to one in four and it's actually worked. People think you can just whack gravel down and leave it, but actually, if you give it a bit of maintenance, it looks a completely different product and it looks wonderful. And it is worth spending a wee bit of time and trouble on it. You'll find that in the autumn, the leaves all fall on it. You'll find that during the summer, the weeds will grow on it. And you'll find that where your car tires zoom into the drive on the same track and into the garage or wherever every day, you'll get slight dips and bits bits of heaps of gravel either side just slightly so really I mean often in this area I leave the leaves till they're all down and they're in heaps and I just pick them up but coming up the drive where people are coming up a long muddyish drive from the road and then they come onto the gravel if they drive over the leaves a lot you just get a mush and it's actually really difficult to clean so you do need to blow or rake up the leaves off the bit where cars are traffing it over regularly quite quickly to stop that happening. I have let an area get a bit too full of leaves and so I am actually just raking it back and then I'm going to put a bit more gravel on the top to refresh it. And I think that is the joy, isn't it? If you compare it to something like tarmac, which not only I don't think looks nearly as nice, if some, someone tips something onto tarmac, you've got to cut it out and repatch it. Whereas something like gravel, you can just chuck a bit more down and it looks as good as new. And then raking. Now, do you or do you not rake a gravel drive? Now, on some jobs I worked on and at Highgrove with the Prince of Wales, every Friday or before the Prince arrives, they'll get out and they will rake the drive. And that raking action not only actually makes the gravel go back to where it was a bit while than my, migrating in different areas, is, it also helps with the weeding. If you regularly rake it, you're going to pull up those little weed seedlings and they'll go. Um, now, a lot of people with big gardens actually have a tractor and they put a wooden bar behind or a rake and they put nails, bang it into the wooden bar. So they're sticking out about two inches and they're just before important people arrive, they just put it behind the mini tractor or gate or whatever and they whip it out and it looks beautiful. It looks as though an army of men has spent all day raking it. Um, now here, I'm not like that quite i don't have the time but i have got an old pallet and i bashed in nails to it so they're sticking out about an inch or so and every so often i drag it round and that makes it look really nice and i always think why don't i do this more often and of course six months later i've forgotten and i make myself go and do it again so i think it does make it look really nice and um, if you just give it that wee bit of maintenance i think it's a very special surface and is really well worth you having